Luffy is simply not human. His anger just made him even more busted. What this dude just did to Saturn and Kizaru is downright criminal. Two of the strongest people in the entire series and he's casually 1v2ing. In the heat of battle, he don't miss. No. In the heat of controversy, he don't miss. After witnessing the death of Vegapunk, Luffy is a different beast right now. He is in full on rage mode, but Vegapunk's death is also about to reveal to us the secrets of the void century and the name of the ancient kingdom because a worldwide live stream has just been triggered due to the old man's heart stopping where sadly his only friend dragon is oh not God. even here come on man but i was wondering something recently what if the real reason dragon isn't at an egghead is because of his weak ass <laughs> browser it's taking him too long to load up the maps well fear not because thanks to our sponsor opera gx i can share with you and dragon the best and fastest browsing experience you probably spend hours of your day sitting in front of the internet so don't you want to make every tiny detail about your experience less boring and more amazing opera gx allows you to customize basically everything have you ever dreamt of having every button press feel like luffy's attacks well now you can maybe you want the one piece wano eye catcher themes to play each time you open and close a tab or make your whole theme go super saiyan blue you can even add animated wallpapers like these but opera gx has also had its own training arc and gotten smarter thanks to ai just highlight something and ask opera to go into more detail for you what makes opera the goat though is that you can watch all of your favorite anime while reading your favorite manga while also browsing social media how else do you think i cover so many series on the channel i use opera gx and have been using for over two years but i also understand that everything like your browsing history cookies bookmarks are all saved on another worse browser right well we are on the future island of egghead right now because opera gx lets you transfer all of that in just a couple of clicks now if you want to make your web browsing experience better than my experience with monkey deadbeat dragon then use our link in the pinned comment and description to download opera today it helps us out a lot we start this week with smelly stinky ass karibu pleading for his life but sigma arger just says call somebody who cares However, Karubu saves himself by revealing to us that Blackbeard will have both Arger and Katarina's heads if anything happens to him. This confirms our balls deep theory that the person Karibu was referring to back in chapter 1056 was in fact Blackbeard. But the information he possesses is so sensitive that Karibu is only willing to offer it directly to Teach, especially considering how the entire crew of Blackbeards is filled with crooks and thieves. We don't get to really see the decision Arger makes but it's clear that Karibu will escape Egghead and join up with the Blackbeard pirates giving him the locations of the ancient weapons. Meanwhile, the marines are getting fodderized by their own pacifistas. They can't even harm them because every single one of their attacks is getting blocked by the bubble shields. With these cyborgs becoming the biggest issue for the soldiers, they formulate a plan. A plan to kill Bonnie because once she is gone, the authority to control them falls back to the government side. So every vice admiral on the scene is ordered to leave their stations and kill Bonnie. These guys are no joke. You can only become a vice admiral when you have mastered observation and armament hockey. I remember back in Amazon Lily when we were saying, oh my god, this dude Momonga, that's what a vice admiral is supposed to be like. I have so much respect for him. He is so dripped out. And so, Vice Admiral Tosa Who? tries to live up to Momonga's height. He charges right behind Bonnie, Frankie, and Atlas who are escaping to the northeast side of the island. Tosa brings up his hand, coats it with armament hockey, and shows us an attack even more devastating than the Rokushiki. A 10 barrel Shigan finger gun. This attack is even a named attack, so you know this guy is serious. Yeah, man, I'm trying my best to hype up these Marines, man. Like, I feel bad for Akainu. He has no manpower right now, stuck behind HQ with his desk hockey. But come on, Oda, give these guys a bone. At least one W. Let them maybe take down a pacifista or two. But no, Dorian Broggy come to the rescue and one-shot Vice Admiral Tosa. The Giants are here to escort the Straw Hats and Vegapunk safely back to Elbaf, likely according to the orders of Shanks. Now, if you're wondering how they recognize to save Frankie, Bonnie, and Atlas, then well, uh, they read the bounty posters. 
Huh? The giants were just passing by, and since the marines are their enemy currently, they just whooped Tosa's ass. But Frankie has never met these guys, so he's extremely cautious, instantly telling them that Luffy is his captain and whether the giants are their enemy. But everything gets cleared up quick, as the warriors of Elbaf instead show their gratitude. Bonnie wastes no time telling the giants about Luffy, Sanji, and Vegapunk fighting Kizaru and Gorosei alone deeper into the island. Just the names of Sanji and Luffy put a smile on Dory's face, but he also name drops that a scholar had told them about Vegapunk back in Elbaf. This scholar is of course none other than Jaguar D. Saul, who is the reason for much of the books in Ohara being saved and were brought back to Elbath. As Dory and Bragi make their way towards Luffy, the marines are in full panic mode cause now they have to deal with the lurking legends of the giant warrior pirates. Among them, Vice Admiral Dahl knows full well the might of the giants as she was an officer under Vice Admiral Saul 20 years ago. This reveal once again reinforces our theory about the need Neo Marines. Throughout the last few decades, the ideas of Saul, Garp, Kuzan have slowly penetrated through the Marines. We saw during the Ohara flashback how Saul's men were crying and weeping, having to be enemies with their own commander. They followed this man with their whole heart. However, due to the fear and the oppressive nature of the system, they couldn't do anything. The stronghold of the government upon the world is cracking, and amongst this crack, there will be a new generation of Marines who will burst through to save the world from impending doom. These will be guys from S.W.O.R.D. like Smoker, Prince Gruss, most likely Dahl now with their association with Saul, and finally Admiral Kobe will lead this entire operation. They will carry the will of Garp and champion a new type of justice which will bring freedom to the citizens rather than oppression. Especially after hearing about what the government just did to Lelucia, which will probably be revealed to the entire world by Vegapunk in his broadcast, this will be the catalyst that finally finally causes the rift amongst the soldiers, ultimately showcasing to the government that their downfall is the consequence of their own actions. But the real question is, what is Faivanji doing? No, 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 no. Vegapunk is barely alive on the ground after Faivanji failed to protect him last, but he has lit his cigarette now. This is a different Sanji. Even Saturn kicks things into high gear and fully transforms into his complete zone, leaving behind any semblance of humanity he had left. Meanwhile, Luffy orders Sanji to get the old man Vegapunk out of here even if he says that moving him would result in his death. Vegapunk has accepted the bed he has made himself. He knew the consequences when he started looking into the void century, but he has the straw hats protecting him now, so Sanji grabs the scientists and runs away. Come on, man. Bro, what the hell happened to the power of love? It didn't even last half a chapter. Who is this guy? Would they replace Sanji with some fraud dude, bro? This is some next level fraudulent behavior. Does the power of love only work when Bonnie's around? Now, I'm really mad. Honestly though, the way Oda wrote Sanji here is pretty awful. Like, why show him light of his signature cigarette if he will just fail at protecting Vegapunk on the next scene? His entire cool factor is taken away. Sanji is supposed to be one of the most competent members of the Straw Hats, but this does the exact opposite of showing that. Maybe in the anime, they'll add him dodging a few lasers with Vegapunk in hand, but you know, Oda gotta finish that manga, so we didn't get to see that. Uh, anyways, let's be a little fair to Five Anji. He did tank a light speed kick from Kizaru with barely any damage, so I guess that's that's a W. Well, let's be nice. Yeah. Let's be nice. <laughs> but another person I gotta give a W to this week is someone you would have never expected. Monkey uh, Deadbeat Dragon. What? Okay, look, the Dragon update this week still says he isn't here yet. Skip. No, 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 no. I spent all of last week looking for this man and I didn't find him. Skip. But, 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 I read every single page Dragon has been on the manga and discovered his great plan. Look, the Gorosei have been mewing for over 1,000 chapters before showing us their true power. So for Dragon to eventually win the mug off, he has to mew longer. That's why he's been so quiet, always looking east. So every chapter he doesn't show up, it actually makes him stronger. So yep, Dragon stocks are way up high. shit we got breaking news coming as luffy's stocks have hit an all-time high and oh my god i can't believe the government stocks are crashing faster than queso yep you're banned 
All right, now going to our weekly Luffy piece where after seeing Vegapunk dead on the floor, he instantly transforms into a giant, grabs hold of Kizaru like he's an ant, while on the other hand is about to squish Gorose Saturn like an insect. He promises both to not let them escape. Luffy will make sure Vegapunk, Bonnie, and his crew will leave Egghead unharmed. This panel is legit cold. Not even during the Kaido fight we saw Gear 5 look this serious. Perhaps this is a hint at Luffy slow gaining more control over the will of his fruit. Because as we know, the laughter he has even in serious situations from Gear 5 Luffy is Nika's will shining through. But being able to grab an Admiral and Gorose at the same time is truly some Yonko shit. And all you people yapping about, oh my god, why does Luffy always get W's? Oda glazing. At this point, why does he need a crew when he can just do everything himself? Shut up, bitch! Can Luffy cook? Nope. Can Luffy navigate? Nope. Can Luffy be a doctor. Nope. We saw what happened he held his sword in Wano, right? <laughs> The only thing Luffy can do for his crew reliably is beat people up, and that's exactly what he's been doing. However, even this might not be able to prevent the death of Vegapunk as his heart stops. This shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone, because the Egghead arc literally started with Shaka telling Dragon that his death is near, so he had a contingency plan in place. Upon his death, a worldwide live stream has just begun, which will inform everyone of the secrets regarding the Void Century, and specifically, the ancient kingdom. Egghead is kind of like a continuation of Ohara, where characters like Saul, Clover, and even a deeper dive on the flashback itself was given to us by Oda. Vegapunk read the saved documents from the world tree at Ohara and had been continuing the research of the archaeologist. That is why the government is so threatened by him. What was the last thing Clover told us before the Gorosei ordered him to be killed? He told us that they knew about the ancient kingdom and why the government is so afraid of this information getting out. But as soon as he was about to tell us the name of it, he was shot mid-sentence. For some reason, the Gorosei let him yap on about everything else except that info. However, now Vegapunk will reveal to the whole world this name. That will send shockwaves. Furthermore, my balls deep senses tell me that Kizaru has been working alongside Vegapunk this whole time. I know he's the one that gave Stella a death blow, but what if this was a needed sacrifice for greater justice? For example, when Saturn told Kizaru to kill Bonnie, he he could have killed her while moving through the tube, but he instead split the tube to let Bonnie out and command the pacifistas. We just saw how fast Kizaru is, how this man was able to kick Sanji and effortlessly send Vegapunk to the donut club, but conveniently chose not to harm Bonnie. What you're telling me a tube created by Vegapunk is stronger than Sanji at defending people? This guy is definitely sus, but is Vegapunk really dead? Doesn't he still have Lilith, York, Edison, and Alice alive? Yes, but they are simply satellite. Stella is the one who all of them rely on. With Vegapunk's death, only things that remain of his are the memories inside Punk Record. If they were all just Vegapunks, then York wouldn't have been backstabbed. However, she had her own innate will as well. Also, if Stella dies, his big brain ability dies with him. Because let's not forget, it's a devil fruit whose effect should wear out, unless Vegapunk somehow created hard drives to compute his brain's info. 